I would like to welcome to your stage, John C.H. Perry. John C.H. Perry invests in people who increase the size of the pie. He shows you how to be confident, to get funding, and to start and or grow your business. He's earned his Bachelor's of Economics and Politics and has travelled extensively to learn from teachers in business, art, and in life. John has four successes as a startup co-founder, backed by investors and private and government partnerships in Australia and Asia, and actively invests in committed startup teams with innovative technology. He began his poetic life because he is a CEO and poet. He began his poetic life in Africa in 2015. Now he regularly performs his material in Melbourne's poetry slams and competitions. He is known as the CEO slash poet for encouraging people to birth groundbreaking ideas, products and services. Please help me welcome to your stage, John C. H. Perry. Woo! Yay! Go, <laughs> oh, John! <laughs> Whoops. There we go. Share screen. Yeah, okay. I uh, should have been ready there. Apologize for that. Um, you can see the screen, right? Yep. No? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to talk today about the mind shift shift, the three mind shift set shifts you need to get your business funded because uh, my observation is about seven out of ten of all businesses from small to businesses that scale overseas and become huge need money to grow and it doesn't occur to the owners the directors the business owner the founders that getting that funding getting that money is as much related to them and their confidence and how they're perceived as it is to the metrics, what the wherewithal of the business that they're conducting. So I'm going to talk about the confidence and the, the focus that you can have to increase your confidence in getting funding. And I'm not suggesting it's easy uh, just by, you know, putting a fridge magnet on your fridge here, the world is giving me a million dollars, it's difficult. And to give you an idea, the odds, uh, a professional investor will hear 1,200 pitches a year from businesses wanting money. They'll maybe sit down with 100 to have a meeting and then there'll be maybe 10 deals, maybe. So it's about improving your odds, but we're not talking about... Um, we're not talking about improving what you do, which is industrial age thinking. Uh, we're, we're talking about improving your odds by you becoming confident, which is essentially confidence in conveying your idea powerfully. So I'm going to demonstrate in the next few minutes how, at a high level anyway, how I can help you build your confidence to get funding. And at the end, there'll be a free offer uh, that can get you started if, if you're interested in that. So reason how come I'm talking like this is because I've had uh, experience myself at raising capital on four occasions. I've been a co-founder and the CEO and I've gone out um, it, and got the money. Uh, that means finding the investors, getting them on board, and then I've been part or was really involved in driving the sales and also the particularly export. We exported to Asia, USA, UK, and the various businesses. And uh, then at a point where I've created a lot of value in the business, then I've sold my share of the business, sold my shares in the business to other shareholders or to incoming investors. And nowadays I'm actively involved in five high growth businesses. And uh, I do that through guiding the CEO and the core team 
to lift the value of their business. And I also share my experience. Uh, here's an example at Victorian Government Initiative, um, Business Initiative at Swinburne University's Masters of Entrepreneurship students. And uh, this is to a breakfast at a, to a group of investors. And I also share with community groups who need to raise money pretty well all the time. And I do workshops. Um, so has it an experience which was a turning point of sorts, which is directly related to what we're talking about right now, which is that um, I uh, was having a coffee with Peter Brock. He's a race car driver who is now dead, but he um, unfortunately drove into a tree. But he was our, on our board of advisors for our automotive technology business where we were exporting through to Thailand. And he pointed out one thing to me after we'd been at an investor meeting and we're having coffee at the top of Collins Street and he just leaned over and he wrote this on a table napkin for me, live your dreams. And he pointed out, look, you've had success through your skill and passion, but your value is yet to be unlocked and it's born of your dream. Your value is born of your dream, born of your vision. And I translated that over time to people invest in people because I could see that once that was unlocked in me, that type of thinking that I could see, yeah, people do invest in people. And the other way of looking at it is people won't invest in you unless you invest your, in yourself. But probably most powerfully, the way to look at it is people will invest in you to the degree that you invest in yourself. And so we're going to talk about three ways to invest in yourself, your vision, your outcome, and living and breathing your business. So the first one is, uh, oh, of course, it's all about building your covenants to get funding, right? So your vision. You could look at the vision as the why behind your why. It's unique to you. If you have an ultimate goal, uh, that's what it would be. So, for example, in the marine biotechnology businesses, my vision was that business and the environment movement could work together. And your vision, your vision is born of imagination. And I'll give you an understanding, I'll give you an idea for me how I know I'm onto, onto my vision and it's born of imagination, not of not really of logical and or industrial age thinking, as I call it, and the and the dysfunctions of education that we currently and social mores that we currently live under is when I say, uh, oh, I'd love to see that happen. Let's do it. And so in the case of the marine biotechnology businesses, I had no idea about marine biotechnology, no idea about the markets, no idea about that business at all. But I could see that it would, it would help me deliver my vision of business and the environment working together. And look, for me, if I can't say I'd love to see that happen, the whole thing becomes a grind and it becomes uninspiring. And so I, I just pass that on to you that you pay attention to your imagination. It's where your power and your greatest value exists. And the shift, first shift to invest in yourself is to shift from skills and knowledge to imagining your vision. It doesn't mean leaving skills and knowledge behind. It means paying at least as much attention to imagining your vision as you do currently to skills and knowledge. So the second shift is your outcome. So let's frame it up this way. A hunger to invest in yourself may very well exist. It exists in mo most of us who are going for it in our lives. But against that, we have other people's rules and our own self imposed boundaries. Now, my indicator for if, if I'm up against my self-imposed boundaries 
is when I look back and say, oh, I could have done that, I should have done that, or it's what I call inherited thinking where you basically count yourself out of outcomes that are really calling you. And I do that. I can see that a lot of people do that. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. They're very common ways of doing that. So I looked at it in the positive. You could say if you invest in yourself, you're up in the top right-hand corner, you with a focus on your outcome. Now, to give you an example, I said that my vision included business and the environment moving, working together to better the future of the planet. And my outcome then became a business that created jobs and exports doing just that. And my why emerged from that, which was saving fish species from overfishing and producing protein at less cost to the environment that other, than other forms of protein. And remember, the how, what, why there and the other quartiles are task orientated. And then there's nothing, there's something essential about them, obviously, how and what. You need your plumber, you need your brain surgeon to know exactly what they're doing and exactly how to do it. it it's just that I'm talking today and I love to talk to people who identify as a CEO, a creative, someone who invents something, someone who owns a business, who builds their own intellectual property. And so I'm talking, if that's you, I'm talking to you, that your power arrives and your most attractive uh, investment proposition really arrives from you focusing on your outcome because your performance and your vision are the highest there. And so you can understand if I put it to you that way, why people don't invest in your how, why, what they invest in the outcome of your vision. So the second shift basically is getting not so much getting better at the task, although we always continue to do that, uh, but to add to it a clear outcome based on your vision. Because it's, it's, it's a dysfunction born of, of industrial age thinking that our education basically instills in us that our highest value comes from how and what we do, getting better at a task. Whereas my observation is your highest value comes from the outcome of your thinking, the outcome of your vision. So living and breathing your business, what's that all about? So we're talking today about you being confident to get funds into your business, whatever size it is. And also, like I'd include here that if you're talking about bringing on a partner, if you're talking about a joint venture, if you're talking about um, getting a bank loan, if you're talking about a co-founder or a collaborator, it, it, they're investing in you. And, they, and you're looking to see initially, is, are, they, are they buying into what you're living? And when I say living it, to give you an example, in my world, the, the startup world, the tech world, um, Blackbird Venture Capital and Rampersand VC openly say we're looking for in, we're looking for founders living from their wild heart. We're looking for big vision, big ambition, big belief. They're looking for the founder first, and then of course tribe. We look need look no further than Tesla, where the customers, team, investors all own the vision of reducing carbon. They've all bought into uh, Musk, Elon Musk's living and breathing that goal because it's about how you make, how they feel, the story they have to tell about it and that they trust in the person who's 100% in, who's all in living it. So if you're looking for money, a founder, investor, joint venture, going to the bank manager, taking on board a, joint, a new partner, a new key employee. If they don't get that you're living it and you can see they're not going to become part of your pride, become part of your tribe. In my case, I don't even bother to show them the metrics. 
uh, metrics, meaning who's doing what, how it's going to be done. That's the business plan, the spreadsheet, the marketing, the pricing models, all of those good things that are absolutely essential. But I don't even show them to, to a potential investor or other person who's not going to become part of my tribe. It's just not worth it because they'll never fund you. They'll never fund you. It'll just never happen. Never say never, right? But it's about 80%, in my view, 80, 80 to 85%. So I can't even be bothered. So the shift to invest in yourself is uh, to shift from product and marketing benefits and metrics to living and breathing your business. And of course, it kind of goes the other way around. When, when, when you are living and breathing your business, then you get to choose who the funder is, who the team member is, who the co-founder is, because if they buy into what you're living, they become part of your team, part of your tribe. You're in the position of power. Uh, it's up to you, of course, how you use that power. So don't make moral, moral judgments on power. Look, look to yourself. So if investing in yourself starts with awareness of your focus, to summarise, and you need to shift your focus from inherited thinking, that's rules and boundaries, to the vision. First of all, identifying a vision and the outcome that emerges from that vision. So I'm all about awareness tools. I mean, I do work with all the practical stuff, the business model, the pricing model, the marketing, all of that stuff to get something to a point where it presents at its highest value. But I know that working with people is the key to unlocking the power because I would estimate the value, I should say, I would estimate that 80% of your success or the value of your business springs from awareness of your focus, like what you're focusing on. Are you focusing on your inherited thinking or you're staying focused on your vision and your outcome? Because they build your confidence. They, and if you want to get funding, they do build your confidence to get funding. So the awareness tool uh, that I'm offering today for free is based on the 12 perspectives that influence your focus and your decisions. So uh, that's not about overcoming, reframing or letting go your inherited thinking. Those things can be done in the personal development domain and they're very uh, well covered there. I'm not looking at it that way. I'm looking at it simply about locate your boundaries and ruling and rules where they're inhibiting your, your power and your higher value and ask yourself, who am I not to live my vision? Who, who are you to play small? The, the world doesn't gain and you don't gain, but you do gain and the world gains if you live your vision. Who are you not to live your vision? So the tool that helps you live your vision and man manifest and express into the world is, is a free tool. It's a PDF. It's, it's, uh, you download it from the link I'm about to show you. It takes about, it, it's really quite short and impactful and it's got a very clear exercise in it that you can quickly reset from your focus on your rules and boundaries to high performance and clarity of vision because, as I said, those, those 12 perspectives allow you to do that because out of a perspective comes an attitude and a decision. So it's, it's quite quick and really I, I use it regularly, but you can use it once and throw it away or you can use it and you can opt in to a 20-minute session with me where I can show you how to remain in your point of power. Again, no trick there. It's, it's, it's you choosing what to do with your focus, but just more about that is possible um, than I can fit into that PDF. So basically get the free link here and it's uh, Anna's put it in the form and it, it's all there easy to get hold of. 
you click on that link and you trade your email address for it immediately appears on your screen and um, you can download it as a PDF as well. And if I would love your feedback if you if you do do it, be I'd be most grateful because the reset tool is well and tested and tried, but uh, not in this way that I haven't used it this way. So if you if you think it's rubbish, let me know. If you think it's useful, let me know. So thanks very much indeed for your time and attention. I appreciate it. Woo! Thank you so much, John. That was amazing. Um, and yes, guys, please do click on that link. John's tools are really, really impactful and they are very quick and easy to be able to help yourself um, build and grow. So we're going to take a five-minute water exchange break. Essentially, have some water, go to the bathroom, come back. I'm going to play some music for about five, and then we will see you back here in about five minutes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. 